today, um, as you can see from my little demo piece, um, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We'll be doing sort of shallower cutting, but finessing it in terms of shading. So this is more about shading and thinking about how you're going to create um, your, whether it's a, a, a drawn work, something like this, or maybe something a bit more abstract um, and, and picking, you know, how to create highlights and um, I guess the areas of, of shadow in your, in your um, design. Um, so in so that's, piece, that's, sorry, Aaron, that's, that's the piece that we're going to be creating that's the piece, today. That's the piece we're aiming, uh, yeah, that's the piece we're aiming for today. Um, we're not going to finish it in one piece today, be, just in terms of timing. Um, some parts of it are a little bit time consuming and boring. So we're going to do a few of the things like you see in the cooking shows, like here's one I prepared earlier. Um, but we, but this is what you would end up with. Um, so just to comment on that, Aaron, it looks absolutely magnificent. So uh, I think people will be very pleased to be able to produce something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So um, how many hours did you put into producing that? Um, look, I think probably um, a good couple of hours, I'd say. Um, and this is the first time I've done this design. And the first time always, always takes longer. Um, I, I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably, but I'd say this would probably be a good, a good hour and a half, even if I sort of got stuck into it, knowing what I was doing. So, um, and this is, and I've kind of finessed this a little bit. Like, I don't know if you can see, if you look at the way the, the, the wing down here meets the leaf on the, on the flower, um, I don't know if you can, if the camera captures it, but it's actually, um, I've done this on both sides of the glass to try and give it more of a three-dimensional nature. Oh. So the butterflies are one side and the, um, the flower is actually on the back. So um, it gives it, again, I'm not sure that it gets captured really well um, unless you see it in person, but- um, it, No, we it definitely get the nice, idea. It's yeah, you're getting a real nice 3D kind of feel to it. Mm. So that's what we're working towards today. Um, this is, this is sort of some of, this is like a, a glorified version of what I did previously. Um, and you can see, uh, this is sort of quite deep cutting. Um, and I started working towards a dragonfly design in the last demonstration. Um, with the diamond burrs and you can see here that some parts of the cutting like in the bottom of the drag the sort of body of the dragonfly are sort of bright white highlights but i've polished out the eyes for example the sort of and they capture the light then and sort of follow you around the room like a bit of a creepy bug um and then the wings again there's fine diamond work there but you can see that there's a bit of a luster to the to the areas between the veins and again that's a surface treatment that i've done with a, a mounted abrasive um, and it affects the surface of the glass, but doesn't sort of give you those, those bright white highlights. And if we zoom out, I'll show you a sort of where I, where I work towards in, in my own personal work. So full screen, this is, this is what, I, what I do. And the light's not picking this up very well, but if I move closer to the camera, you can see Wow. there's a... Um, there's a squid there. And the techniques I'm using today are the same ones that I used to design this. This is just a, this is a, a pre-blown piece in, in black glass. Uh, it's got black color in it. Um, and you can see as the light catches that, you know, the 3D nature of that, of that piece. And the, the bright orange bits um, are actually kind of in a way painted on. I use essentially a, a rub, rub and buff kind of product that you get from um, from a craft store, um, and I, I actually dilute it down with um, essentially terps or a, a medium to to use it more as a paint. But um, it sticks to the glass where the glass has been roughened up, so you can actually add color um, from these rub and buff kind of products to to your finished design as well, which is something which is something neat, which I won't I won't actually sort of go into today, but it's it's another possibility to take yeah. this further. That's a great example of your work. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Put that away where it's safe so I won't <laughs> yeah, drop any. We've got a lid on it so I won't drop anything on it today. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do here is is basically the, the, go through my setup. So um, I'm, I'm going to angle the, the screen down slightly so you'll chop the top of my head off, but you'll see more of what I'm doing down here. Um, I'm working with my main tool that I'll be working with is a micromotor. So... Um, as you can kind of see here, it's a bit bit tight in here, but um, 
this this allows me to select speed so i can control the speed of my my spinning bird this is a diamond bird that i've got mounted in here at the moment um, i can control the speed on that the neat thing about this particular machine um, is that i can also change the direction of the of the rotation um, which is important we'll, we'll, as we get to, we'll get to later we'll see why it's important later because i'm left-handed um a, a machine that wouldn't let me do that would be spinning in the opposite direction to what would be often helpful or useful. So I have that. Um, what we can't see at the moment is up above me is a, a bottle of water and I'll, I'll bring it down later when I need it, but um, a, a water supply. Um, I have a little dripper set up, which is important when working with the diamond birds because it keeps them cool um, and that makes them last longer and you don't overheat the glass and run the risk of cracking. Um, a lot of the what I'm going to be doing today doesn't require water, so I'll just get that when I need it. I have my lights set up and I'm working on a nice dark background. And the dark background is important when we think about the design that we're going to be working on. You philosophically, I guess, um, the, the approach is that we, when we're engraving on glass, the most common approach is that it's like drawing on black paper, I guess. Is, is the way you do it. If you're drawing on black paper, doing a drawing on black paper with a white pencil, what you would do is you'd go and draw in the brightest parts of your image. And this is what happens with the glass. So where the glass is, um, obviously the glass surface is unaffected on this dark background, which is how you'd, you'd normally be viewing a piece of glass, even if it was in, you know, um, set up on a, on a shelf, um, it would be best viewed if engraved if engraved with a with a dark background. So what we usually do is our, our unaffected surface is our darker shadow, essentially our, our black, if we're thinking about the shades that we're using. Whereas our brightest surfaces are, are, are the, the ones that are affected with, um, we've roughened up the most. So the rougher the glass, the more it scatters the light and the brighter that highlight. So our very roughest engraving surfaces, um, engraving burrs will give us the brightest highlights on the glass. Um, other areas like you can see in the, in the middle of the flower there, I'll polish that back out. So that's been engraved and then polished back out to bring to sort of um, make it darker. And you can see that I've polished some areas here so that they have sort of given us some mid-tones. And there are different tools that can directly give us those, those mid-tones, which is nice. So we've got our rough diamonds give us our brightest whites and the, um, the bare glass surface, the, the native surface, give us our, our darkest parts. Um, having said that, most of the time when you're doing an engraving, if you want a dark, dark um, region, like the, the middle of the flower there, you would actually engrave it and then bring it back to a polish because it is subtly different to the, to the naked glass. Um, okay. Now, in terms of the, um, you know, the tools that we're going to use the engraving bits, I've got here a little demo piece that I've done. So this sort of shows how we can get the different shades from the different types of burrs. So a, where are we? A rough, diamond. So I've labeled these, so the dry D is a dry diamond. So I've drawn, a, drawn the stripe down here with the dry diamond and it's the roughest. So that's that's using the diamond in the dry, which is not super great for it, but if you need to use it, do that a little bit, that's, that's fine. Um, that gives us the roughest and brighter surface. Um, and again, you know, some of the subtleties might not be quite picked up on the camera, but um, using the diamond with water gives us slightly um, smoother surface, but it's still bright white. I've also invested in some burrs that are a finer diamond. So these finer diamonds are smoother. I don't know if you can see the difference there, possibly not. Sure. You are with this guy. So that's, a, that's the rougher diamond. You can see that sparkling and the smoother one here. Wet gives us a nice smooth gray. And then if we move away from the diamonds, which we'll be doing a little bit today, I'll just put these away before I lose them. Moving away from diamonds, you can do, use um, other abrasives that are available. So these green stones, 
people call them green stones. If you can, um, you can hopefully see the colour there, they're actually um, silicon carbide uh, stone, and they give again a nice sort of grey. Um, I use these as the base for the, the engravings we do today, sort of as my sort of, um, I guess you'd call it my mid-tone that I then work with. Um, these, you've got to be a little bit selective with these, um, depending on which ones you buy. I think um, if you go to the hardware shop and buy Dremel accessories, for example, um, what you'll end up with is a, a rougher version. And these are great for grinding away at metal and things like that, but less good um, in certain circumstances. So the top part of this, this section here was with one of the rougher ones. You can see it's brighter and it's a lot more chippy and, and then we get the nice smoother graduation with the, with the more, I guess, finessed version of the stone. Moving from there, I also use, and these are a, bit, a little bit harder to find, but these are white stones, which are called Arkansas stones or Arkansas stones, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Again, these will affect the glass surface, but they're really quite soft um, in terms of the finish they give. So that, if you actually hold this up to light, you can kind of see through, through that finish there. And finally, um, a mounted abrasive, and there's various grades to these, but I've used, shown this white one here. Um, it's a bit hard to see it there, but it's got little flecks of silicon carbide abrasive in there. And these ones will affect the surface of the glass and give us this nice gentle sort of almost like a bloom or a blush on the glass. And these are the ones that I used on the dragonfly wings to give us that nice sort of gentle finish. Um, and then what I've done here too is of course, you can use them directly, but then you can also go back over the rougher ones with the uh, softer materials, for example. So down the bottom here, I've shown what happens if you go back over the rougher ones with the, um, the white, um, the, the polisher and you can see you end up like if you look at this one in particular you end up with a surface that isn't sort of directly obtainable from any one of these birds in its own right so you can see if we if we start with like a wet engraved diamond and we can go back with it over it with different materials we can actually adjust those tones and that's how we build up the tones in our um in our design which we'll be doing today okay um well, that's a so, great illustration of uh, how you do all that, uh, Aaron. So thank you. Mm. No, no worries. Yeah. Um, and fire any questions at, at me as you um <laughs> as you if and when they come up. Sorry, and I'm just gonna that's a nice little window down there making noises for me. Um so so they're the sort of the, the basic ones, and then then from there, some other important tools if you're looking to to sort of set yourself up, some really basic ones would be there's these gray polishing rubbers, which are relatively soft, depending on which to, which brand you get. They're really good for working over the diamond surfaces and we'll, we'll see them used today. And then there's these soft brown ones, which, are, which will bring your glass up to almost a, a sort of, um, you know, quite a polish almost. So at the very least you could use these and diamonds and you'd be able to accomplish quite a lot. Um, if you want to be a bit more sophisticated, there are also these abrasives mounted in rubbers. And they come in different shapes. So you can get like a, a square um, wheel, um, same kind of thing with a knife edge for getting in tight, tight spots, um, sort of cylinder and a, and a bullet. And these, uh, these you can buy sometimes mounted you can also buy them um, loose and then you just have to make sure you have the correct mandrel to just to just hold them when you're using them. Um, and this is where you have to be careful with the direction of your, um, your, your turning um, handpiece. If it's the wrong way, these unscrew themselves and shoot across the room, which is kind of annoying. Uh, <laughs> so so the, and the, these all have different, um, going from the the white, white's the roughest in this kind of range of things. These are an E product, D to co do the same kind of things. Um, these have very um, abrasives mounted in a set of silicon rubber um, and the abrasives are, are of different roughnesses so that you can um, sort of work your way down through from the, the rougher ones, the white, the black, blue, and then pink. Pink will take you almost to a sort of 
a mirror finish on the glass. And if you get really, really want to drive it further, you can even go to, to investing in diamond paste, which come, if you can track these down, come in little syringes. And they have, again, do, diamonds mounted in an oily kind of paste that you can use to, to take glass back to a, like, to a proper mirror finish. You have to, it takes a lot of time. Um, you can also use them for repairing um, any slip ups, um, which is fine if you're working on a big sculptural piece. But often, if you're working on a small piece, it takes longer to repair a, a slip up than it does just to start again. So, but it is possible. Um, so, all right. So, that's, that's those guys. Um, right. I think that sort of introduced you back to. to most of the tools we're going to use today, we'll see them as, as we work through the day. And um, I'm basically going to go now and start with our design. So there's our, our piece we're working towards. And as I mentioned before, the flower's on the back. So I have to work on the flower, flipping it around that way. And what I've done here is, here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, and I've started on this one simply because part of the sort of less inter entertaining part of this is, is obviously getting that, that matte finish in the, these bulk areas. Um, you can probably see there that I simply drew this on with a Sharpie. You can see the, the Sharpie on there. Sharp and do you use great. a template or something to do that? Um, yeah, you can. The beauty of the glass is that if you find a design you like, uh, oh, we'll see this in a minute. If you see the design you like, you can just literally put the glass over the top and just draw on it. Yeah, just trace it out with the Sharpie. Yeah. Um, and yes, you have to sometimes have a little bit of a think about where, how it's going to end up um, when you flip it around the way you want it. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good way to do it. Clean your glass first. If you're going to draw up a nice design on your glass, make sure you clean your glass very well to begin with. There's nothing more frustrating than drawing up a big design and as soon as you start engraving and using water, the whole thing washes away, um, as I've discovered. Uh, Sharpies are great. The other things you can buy, and you can just pick these up um, at places like Officeworks and China Graph pencils, they will draw on the glass. Um, it's a waxy kind of... Um, material and that will usually hold up to water pretty well once however i do have the design on the glass i don't muck around i make sure i'm not going to lose it so what i do is move to a relatively soft um, kind of burr you can use a small diamond or small very blunt if you've got an old burr that you've used a lot you can use a blunt diamond and um but i'm going to use the arkansas uh, stone the white arkansas stone because it basically lets me mark out this design in a way that's going to be permanent, but it doesn't go so deep that I'm going to have trouble polishing it out or find it when I've gotten towards the end of my design. I can still see these initial um, layer um, imprints in the, in the design. So I'm basically just going to, and I've got this, my, my, um, my micromotor has a foot control, so I can control the speed a bit um, down below. But I'm basically just going to just draw, draw very roughly over the pen. Just yell at me if I get this in a way, in a place where you can't see it. So this is a pretty fine line and it's pretty, um, pretty shallow. But if I lost the ink from the Sharpie, I would still be able to see where my design is. So that's marked that out pretty well. Um, I'm going to use, to begin with, okay, I've gone to the um, silicon carbide. This particular one has a nice um, angled end. It's sort of a bullet kind of shape, but it lets me sort of do nice flat surfaces pretty efficiently. And you can see I'm just pushing this is pretty efficient and I'm just going with the, in this case, the pedal on the flower, just going in the direction of the pedal, which is help if there's any marks left from the, from the bird to just help, you know, they're running in the right direction. And when engraving, 
push, you know, pushing away and pulling towards you are the, are the right kind of movements. Trying to go sideways is always awkward. And that's why you'll see me rotating the glass quite a bit. Hopefully it'll stay in frame. Yell at me if it doesn't. Um, I'm going to do the leaf now. I'm going to actually go, go a bit wider on the leaf. So I'm going to change to a diamond burr here and I'm going to turn the speed up. Diamond burrs appreciate the high speed. Because I'm using the diamond burr, excuse me here for a second, I'm going to bring down my water supply, which is probably just drips everywhere. Yes, it's dripped everywhere, including on my phone, but it's okay. okay. So we'll just let people know what you're up to there. So you've got a little hose that's just dripping. Yeah, it's going to drip water. I've got a little tap on here from an irrigation system. And it's going to drip water, which is going to lubricate my um, my cutting. Because I'm, because I've now moved to the diamond, um, I do want to use the water to to lubricate what I'm doing. Um, come on, and just wait for water to come back. There we go. So Aaron, how important is uh, stroke pattern to what you're doing? Uh, it, the more thoughtful I am about it. So you can probably see there, I was trying to go in the direction of where the veins would be going on the leaf. Um, and it, it will be important if you're doing, if you're doing something like a leaf and you start to cut in a little bit more deeply, it becomes important when I come back and do the shading because the polishing, um, the polishing, um, pieces will pick up the ridges and not the valleys. And so you can actually get texture in your shading from thinking about how you're engraving at this point, um, which I'll show in a second. And you were able to cover a fair bit of real estate in a short amount of time too. Yeah, that was a five millimeter ball, which is sort of about as big as you can get um, without sort of going looking for them. Um, I've got the, the largest one I have here is, is 10 millimeters. Um, that's, it's a really rough though, and it scratches. I then have to probably go through more polishing stages with this. This is great for doing, like if I was working on a, on a large piece, this can remove a lot of glass very quickly. Yeah. I think it's probably about as large as you can go with this, with the micro motor. Um, I think once you start to get bigger than that, you get too much torque and your wrist sort of, you know, I, I don't know the micro motor would be very appreciative of what you're doing to it. <laughs> it might be too much at all. Um, all right, I'm just going to cut in. I'm going to cut deep now. So I'll just move to a smaller mm -hmm. diamond. This is about a three millimeter one. Um, and I'm going to do the, the stalk here. This is going to be a bit of a deeper cut. I'm not pushing hard. I'm just letting the diamond do its work. You don't want to put too much pressure on there because you, well, you don't need to really. Yeah, the, the diamond and the speed of the diamond are kind of doing the work here. And I'm going to cut into... All right, there's the vein. Okay, and while I'm here, I will move to a 
larger egg shaped guy. And I'm going to just do the middle of the flower. All right, so that's kind of that's 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 given us all of our the, the bulk of our design there, um, and I'm not going to do any more diamond work on that one, I don't think. So I'm going to turn the water off and hopefully make it go away somewhere where it's not making a mess. Um, and having a, a nice soft towel on hand is is good. It just lets you see what you're doing once you get to this polishing point. So now I've got a nice flat kind of image of the flower. I have to kind of now start to create my, my three dimensionality and shading. I'm gonna do that with a, what am I gonna go with? I'm gonna go with the gray polishing rubber to begin with. I'm gonna do the petals. So just while you're putting that on, um, a big shout out to uh, Gail and uh, Cole who have uh, given very generous um, comments. So they're, they're really appreciating what you're getting up to there. Aaron. Thanks very much. Mm. All right, so, uh, so now I've got the brown, this nice rel relatively soft brown rubber on here. This one is really good working over the silicon carbide or the diamond. It, it starts to bring, bring some, um, there we go, sit better. Bring some shading in. So, You have to be a little bit careful with this. If you get too a bit too enthusiastic, it's like being back in primary school. If you go outside the lines, uh, this will mark the surface of the glass. Um, I'm not being very finessed about this at the moment. Probably go to a smaller version. This, this is a white. One of the white mounted abrasives, which gives a bit gives me a little bit more control. Um, and I might even touch up the leaf a bit. Sort of above, above that central vein, and I guess on this lower side, we'll say that the shadow is going to be down the bottom. Um, so you can see I'm starting to get a bit of shading there. I'm going to pre-polish the, um, the, I want that center of that flower to be really quite dark. So I'm going to pre-polish it with a with a softer stone because I had diamond on there before. It was the 400 grit diamond, so the, the sort of smoother one. I'm just going to touch it up with the Arkansas uh, stone, and you can already, you'll already be able to see after this that it's, it's actually, polished up a little bit more again. And I'm just going lightly. I don't want to, these, this, these polishing stones are quite, um, quite soft. So hopefully you can see that it's starting to, to polish that out. And then from there, where to? I think the black, black rubber. So I'm, and the other thing I'm doing, you probably can't see in the background is as I'm going, I'm sort of adjusting this, the speed. So these softer stones, I use a much slower speed than the diamonds. And especially when I get to these um, polishing rubbers, um, I'm going to be a little bit selective about them. And, and you can, you can overdo the speed with the polishing rubbers too. And it sort of gets to the point where if you go too fast with them, you actually put a bloom on the glass that then is really hard to get rid of. So this is the black um, bullet kind of point. And you can see that's really, well, hopefully you can see it. That's really nicely polished out the center of the, of the, the flower there. Yeah, that's amazing. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's neat um, to be able to do that. Uh, that black one's really quite good. Now, the next one I'm gonna use is um, a wheel. This is actually the wrong one I have on here. Um, and now I've been careful, I've, I've changed the speed of, that, sorry, the direction of my rotation at the moment. So 
the wheels kind of the bottom of the wheels turning away from me and that keeps these screwed on this little these little knife edged black um this are really quite good for just touching up um just with a gentle gentle touch you can sort of cover pretty decent areas and we'll work on the leaf down here next and you can you can sort of just hopefully you can see what i'm doing here is just the brush or brush away and now you might also be able to see that i'm picking up the directionality of some of those diamond cuts that i did before some of them sort of are starting to become evident I'll just, just use this a little bit up here. Um, and even, and this can also be handy for running down, I forget the angle, right? Running, running down a, um, something like the stem. So what we sometimes do is, is you know, we started with this quite, we've gone from the, the clear glass to quite um, a dark area. And now, sorry, quite a bright area. And then we kind of polish back to give us our, our shading. And then we turn around and now we're going to put in some finer detail. So I'm now going to use, what do I use? I think this one works. A, a sort of a rat tail kind of, so quite a narrow diamond. And, and I'm only doing a little bit here, so I'm not gonna use water, but now I'm gonna add some extra highlights in. So I can do things like add in, actually I'm gonna turn the speed up. So I can add in veins, for example. So now that's added some, some features back in, I'm going to a really small um, diamond ball now, down about the one millimeter size. These are really nice for, um, for uh, doing small features and even signing things and, and doing little labels. So I can add kind of like little diamonds here and put a ball, a little, Cut at the end. You're a bit of a Joseph Banks there, Aaron. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, looking amazing. So there, there you go. You can sort of it, hopefully that if we don't pick up the fluoro light, you can start to see how that's coming together. And what I would, I, I won't do it now because it's in the interest of time, but, but like, I'd also at the end take take this finer one and just, just probably finesse up some of the edges. Um, and then maybe like add a highlight down the top side of the stem and a few little things like that. And, and you can just see, you sort of get to a point where you think, oh, okay, it's looking good, looking a little bit plain though. And then these little finessing touches at the very end can really make the difference. So that's, so that's that guy. That's, that's the flower. I think I'll keep, I'll keep the flower there and move on to the butterfly. So just before we move on, um, just like to welcome uh, Hamish, Jane and uh, Wayne, they've made uh, lovely comments. And uh, Hamish has asked, uh, is there a reason you don't use acid etching for the bulk of your work aside from the awful chemicals? Yeah, aside from the awful chemicals. I'm actually, uh, my day job, I'm actually a research chemist. So um, of all the people in the world who could work with these things, um, I choose not to because I, I don't like them. Um, besides that, no. Um, 
Look, the the acid etchings are a wonderful way to get a really nice finish, particularly if you're working with lead crystal. This this is just float glass here today. Um, you can get some your beautiful soft finishes with acid etching, absolutely. Um, and I know you can buy little kits that'll that'll do it for you. What I actually prefer when I work on larger pieces, I don't have any to hand down here, but um, is sandblasting. So if I was to do this kind of thing, especially um, especially setting up something like the butterfly wings, if I was to do do that on a larger scale, if I wanted to do a large one, I wouldn't sit here and just work on the surface by hand. I'd actually sandblast it. So we have a sandblaster, so compressed air, and we use silicon carbide grit, and we'd mask off the areas we don't want affected, and we would, um, you know, then I, and I'd sandblast. And I'd get a similar finish to this, to tell you the truth. And the sandblasted finish works really nicely um, as a nice matte white starting point to then polish back from and, and add your, um, your shading to. So, yeah, sandblasting is a really good tool for doing that. I'd... I'd I'd go sandblasting over acid etching any day. Um, you know, there's still health and safety concerns with anything just because of the dust, but um, but compared to the acid etching, I think it, it's a, a better option. No worries. And uh, also, uh, Hamish was interested to know how you got started in uh, the engraving. Um, I got started because, like, I do I do the blown work, blown glass, but the facilities we to, I need to use for that. Um, I'm limited in what I can do here. Um, so I'd be traveling to Canberra to the glassworks down there to do that, the larger blown pieces. Um, and that travel becomes, especially these days, I've already had a trip canceled about two weeks ago uh, because of COVID. So um, I, I began to focus on, okay, well, let's finesse the, the glass. I have the simple, because I, I blow simple forms. I'm not the world's best glass buyer by any means. Um, I can blow simple forms. And I then add to them by, by doing the surface work. And I, I do a lot of drawing. Um, I run, I run life drawing sessions here in Brisbane for many years. Um, and so I guess with that drawing background and the glass, it, it sort of was a natural, a natural kind of thing to do. Um, that's, and that's how I got started. And I've sort of just been teaching, teaching myself ever, ever since, I guess. So, yeah, well, judging by the comments, everyone's really impressed. Aaron, and uh, I'll invite any other questions as we go along to please uh, shout out and we'll uh, put them to Aaron. Excellent. So uh, we're moving on to the butterfly now, hey? Yeah, so we're going to move on to the butterfly. So what I would have done from, from where I was before is I would have taken my pre-prepared printed out butterflies. So I basically was after a butterfly that had spots because spots are really nice to demonstrate. And I would have um, taken my flower laid it on there, there's my butterfly, lined it up and drawn it on with the Sharpie. It would have been that simple. That's, that's how I would have gone to continue on with this piece. Um, draw on my butterfly with the Sharpie. Uh, here's one I prepared earlier, obviously, like all good chefs. Um, you can see this is, I've got the, the, um, the flowers still drawn on the back of this piece and I'm now working on the other side of the glass. So that's why the flower looks like it's around the other way. And what I did do with this is I cheated last night and I worked with my silicon carbide burr. This one worked really nicely and I basically did the whole surface um, of those three wings. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to continue doing that. I am going to, however, um, continue on with this. I I'm only going to work on one half of the butterfly because the other half is going to be the same. They're symmetrical. Um, just in the interest of times, I'm also, you're going to see me turning around possibly every now and then uh, just to remind myself how I'm going to do this in the most efficient kind of way. I am going to very quickly do the body on this thing and I'm going to do that with a relatively smooth diamond just to, um, in the interest of time, I am going to turn on the water because I can because it's just here. Okay, so relatively smooth diamond. It doesn't have to be the smooth one. I'm just doing that because it'll make my life a little bit easier. These, these cuts are a little bit deeper. 
the uh, the wings are really right on the surface. Um, I can't see much of what I'm doing there. There we go. Changing tools is nice and quick. So I am going to change to a, I'm going to cheat because I'm going to use three millimeter polishing pins, um, which are these little little guys. So they're a rubberized pin, but it's mounted in a little, in a little mandrel there. The pins actually look like that. Um, they're three millimeter ones. And because I'm going to be polishing out these eyes, I'm going to oops, lock it in. And all right, there's the eyes. So we'll polish them out in a bit. Okay, back to the dry surface. I'm going to use, again, the black rubber wheel. And am I gonna best do this, do it in this direction? Start darkening up the wings closest to the body. And I am going not only in the wrong direction, but way too fast. That's what I, was, I was wondering why I was doing such a good job of that. That's better. The beauty of doing um, butterfly wings is that they're kind of, um, they're not perfect. So if it looks a little bit kind of textured or whatever, it's kind of in keeping with the nature of the beast. So if we do more towards the body, that'll end up being darker. And I kind of, I'm not going all the way because I, I kind of know what I'm going to be doing next. So I'm, I'm sort of pulling up a bit short in some areas. I know that I need a dark bit up there as well. All right, so that's a start on that. Um, now, from there, I'm going to use, I think this guy. I'm going to work on the circles on the wings, and you can see, I'll basically take some tracing paper and I have, it is line this around. I've traced out the butterfly a few times and basically kind of pulled the design apart and, and sort of worked it out in stages as to how I'm going to approach it. Um, now I'm going to do some areas and it helps if I had my drawing nearby, I'd be able to see what I want to do. Um, I know I want some, I'm going to put a circle in here. I want this bit to be dark. And up here and here. And I'm going to have a circle there and down here. Now, these little ones, this one that I'm using at the moment is quite wonderful. Um, I really like these. They come pre mounted and I go through quite a lot of them. They're excellent um, on top of the diamond to just give you a real head start in terms of your, your polishing. I'm going to use that there. Um, I might then run around the edges with this as well. And now 
some of those areas I want to make even darker. So I'm going to move to a softer, the brown rubber. I really want these, these to be really quite polished. And I'm not being super careful here because I know that some of this is about to get munched up by the um, diamond engraving in the next step. Um, this little brown guy will also take the opportunity to put a bit more detail in here, there. It's going away on me. Is it a white? I can see what I'm, how I'm going. And from there, I am going to use, um, I'm going to use a disc around the edge. So in terms of softness, Somewhere I've hidden the one that I actually want to use. Oh, there it is. Um, in terms of softness, the, the, these, this um, blue is sort of the second softest. It's a pretty decent polish. It'll go reasonably dark. I have to be a little bit careful with this one. I know from experience that if I go too hard and fast with this one, it will actually leave marks on the glass. And if we demonstrate that, so be it. But, I basically want to put a little track around the edge. Probably not done the best job in the world, but it's getting there. Um, right, from there, we're going to get aggressive again now, and we're going to use, well, I'm going to use one of the big guys. I'm actually going to go for a really rough diamond, turning the speed up again, not too high because this is a really rough one uh, and quite large. I'm going to work on some of the spots on the wings. Got the diamond going here. So the water going again. How big was the head on that diamond one? That's the eight millimeter one. Okay. Oh yeah. And you can see, I don't just like get stuck into the glass and just press down with it. I actually, I actually start off with a like start the, the cut and then sort of go around the rim of it and then sort of back into the center. So you sort of just not force trying to force the ball into the glass. You're sort of just, just teasing it out as you go. Um, I'm actually now going to, on one of those, I'm looking for a slightly different effect. I'm going to try and, um, I don't mess this up, have a, another deeper cut in the center. So I've gone now down to the five millimeter bore. So I'm kind of cutting circles within circles at the moment. And if I polish them correctly, that means we'll have bright rings with dark rings. That's the idea. Um, and to start polishing, I'm going to go to the black bullet again, the Eve rubber, rubberized bullet. Um, and I'm going to try and polish out some of these 
Watch my speed, watch my direction. All right. Watch out that guy. And this one. Hopefully you can see that that's polishing up really quite, quite nicely. And this one down here, I don't want to do the whole thing. I just want to do the very central bit for that second cut. And this one likewise. Hopefully that's worked a little bit. I'll then go from there to blue being the next, next one down in the polishing scale. This bullet still, oh, this one's still got a bit more of a, a nice point on it. It's a bit easier to get into those deeper cuts. So that's that's kind of them. How are we going for time, Peter? Uh, we're nearing the end, uh, Aaron. So... The end? Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate um, a couple of other little neat things that we haven't really looked at yet. These are again, these are polishing pins, and there's various brands you can get these through AJS um, and Again, a range of um, degrees of grit size within them. So I use my little handy reference here. So yellow, so I remember which is the roughest. Yellow being the roughest, and you work your way down through the colors. And these will take you, if you work your way down methodically, these will take you all the way to a really nice fine, pin it, fine finish. The beauty of them is that they're they're small, so they can get into the tight spaces. So I'm going to do the eyeball, for example, here. So this is and this is good for getting into, into here. So then having done that one, I would then move on to the next finest one. And going through all these processes, I would end up at the end with a really nice fine finish. And having assumed we've been through all this, we're running out of time, so I'm not gonna go into too much more detail in terms of polishing back. What I'm gonna do now is just show you how we now bring it, bring some of the highlights back into the piece. So, um, I'm going to say, want look. I want to stripe around the outside of the of the wing. Um, I polished some of it out, so I've kind of created a a darkish area on the outside there. So those those sort of outer three millimeters. But I want another line. Let's say I want another line in there. Um, I can do that. I'm going to do it with the Arkansas stone. Does that look? Yeah, that shows up a bit better right on the wet. So in this case, I've, it is quite a, it's a subtle effect, but it's, I don't know if you can see it. It's a subtle effect, but it's there. Yeah. Mm. Um, if I, I if I thought that was too, too subtle, I could do it with, uh, I could go with a silicon carbide one as well. So now we've got two, two new stripes there of different um, shades. And towards the end, what I'd also do, well, actually another thing I could do on the way to there is if I decide I wanted any areas whiter. So we, we had that silicon carbide gray as our background. If we wanted a, an even brighter area here, I could just go through and touch it up with a, with a, with a bit of diamond. So this is a smoother diamond. So it's gonna let me do some do some areas of the highlights. So 
So that gives me some little highlight, highlighted areas. And finally, what I would probably do, or what I would do, I'd probably about it, is I'd grab a drop of water and give this little guy some antennas. So this is a one millimeter diamond. And I want the outer bit here to be a bit thicker. So I'm just going slower, so it cuts deeper. Hang around on the end to give a little bit of a knob on the end. Same this way, slowing down. A little bit of a knob on the end. And I'm just gonna wet this a little bit here. And then I'm gonna tidy up around the edges. And even on the top edge here, there's actually a pretty thick kind of like a leaf, um, a wing vein kind of thing. And I know that there's a pattern in the veins that goes something like this. And I would go to see like that. And as that dries, that'll all, all come up. Yeah, you can see that the extra little touches just uh, keep enhancing it more and more, don't they? They do. And sorry, some of those extra touches, I've gone outside the lines. Uh, so <laughs> I'd fail at preschool, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it is those little those little touches. So it's 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 that it's that putting in that 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 um that shading, polishing out to give you your darker areas, and then coming back with some highlights at the end and the the fine work at the end for those finishing touches. And that and there those finishing touches just kind of add to it. I would have also gone through and with this little finer piece finer um, bit I could put some um, some segments on the uh, on the body there and little things like that just just to help finish it off yeah yes. and um, then the hard question or the hard thing I'm sure Aaron is knowing when to stop it is it is um, it is very hard to know when to stop I find often what I need to do is uh, is when I get to that point is go away. <laughs> <laughs> I then go, I, I leave it overnight and I come back. And sometimes I'm really disappointed in, I, I, you know, I have a vision in my mind and I'm sort of disappointed in what I've done. And um, and I I go away and come and look at it with fresh eyes in the morning and and often that helps. And um, I did a, um, a gecko the other day as another a, a potential idea for the demo. And uh, it didn't come up as well as I thought, but it, having looked at it again overnight, it was like, hey, that was okay. <laughs> it was some work, but not bad for a first go. So there we go. Part of the way there, um, there's a few things I didn't quite get to, but nothing, nothing that was anything different to what I showed you. So there's just more of finessing of, or more use of the, the techniques that I was showing you there. So. If you just um, want to hold that finished piece closer to the camera. Uh, yeah. yeah, I deliberately wore my dark shirt so we can actually do it. Well. So this so there is, you go. Uh, yeah. So there you go. And again, you see that that three dimensionality. You see that the um, the leaf and the and the butterfly are in different planes there. Um, and that's an approach you can actually you can actually laminate pieces of glass like this and do different designs on each surface of the glass and make real you know three dimensional sculptural pieces. So. Yeah, so that's that's that guy. Um, okay, Taj sums it up. Uh, really beautiful work. So, uh, yeah, and we'll uh, look forward to getting you back another time real soon. All right, thank you very much. Um, I've enjoyed it. It's been fun. It's been tight. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Aaron. All right, thanks very much, Peter. See you next time, everybody. Bye.